and then one Grand Guignol, which I'm thinking about. This deck is so many Starlights. Why are you doing this to yourself? I, I understand you like Branded, but dude, holy shit. Someone at Konami just were like, dude, we're going to milk these Branded Enjoyers. And you're just on the un unfortunate end of being milked, dude. The fusions look good. They look good, but that's what they, they, they just, at some point, someone at Konami was like, hey, there's like a billion archetypes that have a, that have a great following that people love, right? There's a lot of archetypes that, that have a lot of fans out there, but someone at Konami was like, we're, we're going to make these branded enjoyers suffer. We're going to make them suffer. We're going to give them the most insane high rare treatment ever. Which for some people might be a good thing, like if you're a freaking millionaire, then you're probably happy that you can like play the branded deck in that with that much. But like, bro, I would never, <laughs> I would never do that, dude. One. I'm not gonna lie, I like it. You can play branded for like what's the cheapest branded version if you get everything low rarity, two hundred, maybe a little bit more because of like Cartesia, Quem. There's a couple secrets that are actually like a a bit of money now. Like Bestial Lubelion, Cartesia, Quem, uh, uh, what else is there? Um, Guardian Chimera, I guess, still is not completely cheap. Cartesia is 60 bucks? Are you kidding me? Do I still have my Cartesia that I pulled? We pulled a Cartesia, right, chat? Am I... I don't remember selling that. Okay, it's not 60. You're capping. Hold up. You've been... You've been caught in 4K capping. It's 40. It's not 60. In NA, it's 60. Okay, I'll believe you. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Still, the fact that, like, you can get branded for, let's say, let's say 300. 300, I think, is, it's a lot of money. But for a high-tier competitive Yu-Gi-Oh deck, 300, I would say, is decent. There's definitely been way worse than that. Right? But if you want to, you can also get a branded deck that looks like this one, and then it's gonna cost you freaking how much? 5,000 or something? Like, if you get all the Starlights and Ultimate Rares? 2,000? You think it's just 2,000? I don't think so. Like, it's two Mirror Jades, Grand Guignol, two Cartesias, Quem, Ulti Alubers, Ulti Fallen of Albazes. Um, it's not 5k. It's not 5k. I, I exaggerated. I exaggerated. But it's still, is, it's a lot of money. I think it's more than 2k. I think it's more than 2k. Maybe it's 3. Maybe it's 3. Oh yeah, Branded Fusion gets an ulti next month. You know, you want like Collector's Rare Guardian Chimera. All that stuff, dude. I, it's, it's very expensive. Which is a, that's, that's a good way to do it. I've been saying this in the past. That's what Pokemon does. Is like they print cards very cheap versions and then they make a super cool looking alternate art uh that one's money but if you want to stay budget you can stay budget like with mirror jade you can you can pick up a mirror jade for like what a euro or you can pay 400 if you want to be fancy but you have the choice right you have a choice to make and that's cool and that's what they do in the ocg as well i think they should do that to more decks they should give that treatment to way more decks they should make like instead of giving us freaking useless starlights like which one which one is in this set that's completely useless there's one starlight in every set that if you pull that one you're just like god damn it why did i pull that one which one is it right now there's one i forgot either way it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter like thrust for example i think would have been a beautiful like just like super rare plus starlight that would have been good for everybody, right? The people that want to be fancy and pay hella money for thrust, they can get starlights. The people that don't, they can get super rares. I think that's what they should do more often. I don't know. That's just my take. Go for game. They literally do what you said in the OCG. I know. That's why it's so frustrating. That's why it's so frustrating because, like, Konami Japan does this exact thing. For some reason, Konami NA or Konami EU or whoever decides these things here does not agree with that logic. They think that our market works differently, which I don't think is actually the case. I don't think they I don't think they realize that they could do it and it would still be fine. Because the other games that do it, like um Pokemon or something, they are doing totally fine, right? Like I I'm pretty sure that uh 
Pokemon sales are are completely fine in in the US and in in Europe but for some reason they're just like not uh they don't they are not willing to do it with um with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. Doesn't not Pokemon do even better? Well, yeah, I I think so. But that's because Pokemon is also just a bigger brand, right? It's like a, it's a it's a much more powerful franchise than than Yu-Gi-Oh, but still the concept is the same just on a larger scale. Fusion decks, which is a lot of them, most of them actually, then it just makes the game state a lot more simple, and you can just go for big damage. Then uh, Mudragon and Garura. This is the extra deck. Now for the side, we're playing two Pokemon's Santa. one of the biggest franchise. I think Pokemon is the biggest franchise. They do it because they get away with it. That is also true. On the other hand, counter argument. Of course, it from our perspective, it could be better. But think of it. Think of it from their perspective. They have no reason to change it up because Yu-Gi-Oh is doing well. Right? Which is a good thing overall, right? In NA and EU, Yu-Gi-Oh! is doing great. So, from, from that standpoint, why would they risk it, right? Why would they risk it um, to, to change their, their, the way they've been doing it if what they've been doing so far has been working, right? I mean, I, I, think, you, I think that's also very easy to get behind, right? That's a very easy to get behind logic. Um, is there a risk? Yeah, they could make less money. They could make less money because they would be experimenting with uh, different ways to like it's it would basically be a a, a, a different product, right? Uh, a, a a set with pretty much um, the same cards but uh, different rarities. That's a different product that people will receive differently. So it could actually end up doing worse than um, that because in theory, if the cards are available in um, in lower rarities then um, people have to buy less of the product to get all the cards that they need, right? If all of the, like, for example, if all of the cash Tira cards are commons, extreme example, all you need is one box of the set and then you have the entire deck, right? So in theory, maybe it could lead to less sales. You're trying to balance that by still putting high rare chase cards in those sets, right? That's what, like, Starlights are and whatnot, right? If someone wants... The high rarity version of the deck, they still need to buy a lot, and that's why it's working for other games, right? People are people get their decks for cheap, but the people that want the rare cards in different like alternate artworks, they still have to spend a lot of money and open a lot of product, and so overall it evens out, but it still is a risk attached to it. 